A big hi to all MBA aspirants out there. Many of you know that GMAT released the GMAT Focus edition recently and the scoring on GMAT Focus is completely different from what it was earlier and a lot of people don't understand how the scoring really works. So in this video, we are going to help you understand the GMAT Focus scoring all within next 5 minutes. So if you really like the video, do give it a like and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for more such videos because we are going to do many such 5 minute explainer videos on GMAT really really soon. So let's get started. So let's say you took the GMAT focus and you scored a 80 in exactly all three areas, quant, di and verbal and your overall score is 605 and you are wondering what does this 80 really mean? Um, have I gotten 80% questions correct? Is it 80 out of 100 in terms of score? It is out of 90? Is it the percentile? Sadly, it is none of them and that's where the scoring becomes complex. So what does this 80 really mean? This 80 is nothing but a score which is mapped to a certain percentile. So instead of telling you that you have scored a 66th percentile on the quant section, the GMAT is telling you that you have a quant 80. So the moment you see an 80 score in quant, you can understand that you are at the 66th percentile and you are better than 66% of the people. Now obviously, telling the percentile directly would have been probably much more simpler, but that's the GMAT way of doing things. They tell you a score against a percentile. Similarly, if you have a quant 88, that means you are the 95th percentile better than 95% people. But does this mean that every score of 80, let's say uh, 80 in quant and 80 in verbal, both of them relate to a 66 percentile? That's not true. In different sections, the mapping is very different and that makes it even more complex for that matter. You can see that on the screen right now that 80 in DI is an 86th percentile and verbal 80 is 60th percentile. So yeah, I know it's all complex, but at GMAT, we always try to make things simple for you. So we will give you a link in the description to get this mapping chart if you want to. Okay. Now you might be thinking, I understand the individual scores, but what, how does I, how do I get a total score out of 805? So now, what I've done is I've created a simple formula. You just have to plug in numbers over there and it will tell you the overall score. This formula is something that we have derived at after looking at thousands of GMAT focus scores. So what you have to do is you have to, in this formula, you have to plug instead of X, the total of quant, DI and verbal scores that you get and the outcome will be the GMAT score. So let's say you take the same example, 80, 80, 80, the total is 240. You plug 240 in this formula and you will get the outcome as 605 because 240 minus 240 is 0, which multiplied by 6, 6.67 is also 0. Okay. Now this 240 could be arrived in any other combination, 75, 85 and 80 also. Similarly, let's take another example. If the X is 255, which is 85, 85, 85 or any other combination, as I said, you will get to the GMAT focus score as 705. Okay, so simply use this formula, you'll get the outcome. And remember, GMAT focus scores end in 5, so you have to round the outcome to the nearest 5 to get an approximate idea of the number. Now, how did we arrive at this? There is a very logical way of doing this, by the way. So, what you can do is you can look at as a baseline score, you can set in your mind that 240 in raw score in terms of all the three scores combined, quant, verbal and DI, translates to 605 on total score of GMAT focus. So if you increase your raw score by 3 points, your total score increases by 20 points. So from 240 to 243 means a 20 point increase to 625 in the total score. And you keep increasing by 3 points, your total score increases by 20 points and same is true for the decrease. So any change of 3 points is equivalent to a change of 20 points in the total score. Okay. Now, you might as well be thinking that, okay, why did GMAT create so much complexity? They could have simply given the raw score, total raw score as the total score, right? They could have just said that, okay, you have gotten a 240. Why did they bother about giving a 605 instead of 240? The reason for that is in the GMAT classic, they used to give scoring uh, on the same pattern, like up to around 800 score is what they used to give. So they wanted to keep the uh, parameter is similar but there's a complexity over there as well that a GMAT focus score of 600 is not equivalent to a GMAT classic score of 600. There's a slight difference in the mapping there as well around 50 to 60 point difference is there but again I can't discuss that in the video here so I'll give you a link to the concordance table the mapping table that GMAT has provided and we will also create another video on the comparison between a GMAT focus and a GMAT classic scores and which scores will be required for which school. Now you might be thinking what does a verbal 80 mean? So I understand that if I get a 240 in raw score, I get a 605 total. But how do I get a verbal 80? How do I get a quant 80? Now that in GMAT is not very easy to understand because GMAT is an adaptive algorithm. People with same number of questions correct can have very different scores. So you can see on your screen, two people with 17 out of 23 questions correct in verbal 
can have different scores like 84 and 81. Now there is just three point difference you might think, but the percentile difference is humongous between these two. And there is a possibility that, and these are actual scorecards where I've pulled this data from, by the way, there's, these are something which I've not manufactured. There are people who have scored, got, gotten only 14 questions correct and still gotten a verbal 82, less questions correct than this person and the score is still higher. So it's an adaptive algorithm, it's not that simple to understand. So we have done multiple webinars on the same and I'll share the link for some of them. And we are going to do a small 5 minute explainer video on the same as well that approximately what number of questions correct means what kind of score. Obviously it will be approximate because in the adaptive algorithm accuracy is not the only thing that matters. So I'll cover another in, in another video how that actually happens. So I hope you liked the video and if you did like it, do give it a thumbs up and do share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to further updates and do check out GMAT Prez if you want to simplify your GMAT prep. We are always there to help you out with the best preparation possible.